Roast beef dinner is fantastic. No one would argue that, but it can be kind of a pain and it can leave you with a kitchen full of dishes. So today I want to share with you a recipe that I put together for a great one pot pressure cooked pot roast beef that will stand you in good stead every time. It's got delicious beef, beautiful veggies, everything you could wish for, all served in a wonderful gravy. Let's get to it. Okay, so as usual, let's start by setting ourselves up a little mise en place, and for that we'll start with veg prep. This is just one large white onion. We'll just roughly chop this. There's no need to be precious here. We can just roughly chop it. We're going to pressure cook this anyway. And those look great. And now some carrots. I've got some nice little heritage carrots, various colours here. You can use whatever carrots you have handy. Again, just peel them. Those skins will get a little bit leathery if you don't. And then just roughly chop them up into nice good sized chunks. Try and keep the mass about the same if you can. So just roughly chop and yeah, those are looking good. Next up some celery just to help with that aromatic base. So again, we'll just roughly chop this, take off the tops and bottoms and just mow through it. No need to be precious about this at all. I happen to have this leek line around, so let's take off the dry tops and then we'll slice it lengthways so we can give it a good wash. Under a cold tap, give it a nice good rinse, get rid of all of that sand and grit that might be between those layers. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So once that's done, let's shake off the excess water and give it a good, again, rough chop. No need to be precious, just mow through it and those chunks will cook down lovely. And finally, the potatoes. Now for mashing, I like a floury variety. These are King Edwards. You could use Mary's Piper if there is available. Um, in other countries, russets would be a good choice. These will make great buttery, floury mash that's really nice and will dry out really well. Let's get a pan of cold water ready and just chop these up roughly into sort of one inch-ish cubes. They don't need to be too big. They don't need to be too small. If they're too small, they won't cook evenly. So get all of those into the water for later and let's move on to the meat. This is about one and a quarter kilos of salmon cut silver side. Let's just take off any moisture with kitchen paper. Just make sure it's dry on all sides. Get rid of that plastic and that meat is good to go. It's a lovely cut. Very nice. Let's coat it with some oil. High smoke point. I'm using sunflower today. And give it a good strong pinch of salt. There's a lot of meat here so make sure you get plenty of seasoning on there. Rub it in. That's not quite enough salt so I think we need a little more. And that's looking a little bit better. Let's make sure it coats all sides nicely. We've got a good coating of oil. Don't be shy with this seasoning. Make sure you've got plenty of salt. But I wouldn't add any pepper at this point because it will burn when we brown this meat in a couple of minutes. Let's fire up the multi-cooker. This one's a crock pot. Other brands are available. We want the brown and sauté mode. And we'll just set that to start and leave that to heat up for a good 10 minutes or so. Once that's heated, in with the meat. And that will start to brown. Give it a good brown on all sides so you get a nice good seal on the meat. That's sounding really great. Loving that sizzle. Make sure you give it plenty of time on, on all sides to give a really good brown colour and get that Maillard reaction going for the flavours. Once you've got a nice good colour, turn it over and, and do it on all sides. Make sure you get a good cover on all sides. As I say, it's really essential for that flavour. And this is looking pretty good now. It took maybe six or eight minutes in total. It's nice and brown on all sides. So let's remove that from the pot. And then in with the celery and the onions. I want to give these a few minutes head start to uh, start to soften, start to colour a little bit. And just to sort of, you know, cook them down slightly before we add in the rest of the veg. So let's give these a good stir around. This is looking a little dry, so I think we we'll probably need to add a little bit of oil here. And again, we'll just use some sunflower. Give it a good long squeeze of that. And give it a good stir to get everything coated. And let that cook down for a little while just to, just to get a good head start on the rest of the veg. Those are looking pretty good at this point, so in with the leeks. And we'll give that a good stir around just to combine everything and give those a couple of minutes just to start to soften and cook down. Before we go in with some good quality tomato puree, tomato paste. I'm giving it a good squirt here, it's maybe 15 grams. And we'll give that a good stir to combine everything and just let that cook for a couple of minutes before we do anything else. In with the carrots, just let those combine in with everything else. Oops, almost. And again, just give it a good stir around, make sure everything's combined, nothing's looking too dry. Looking great. Once those have had three or four minutes to start getting some colour, let's go in with some red wine. They say if you wouldn't drink it, don't cook with it, and I kind of agree, but no need to break the bank. This is a six or seven quid bottle of Sicilian red. And I'm going to put a good glass full, maybe 275 mils in there. Looks good. And some beef stock. I like this brand, others are available. And again, maybe 200 mils of that, just enough to barely cover that veg in the bottom. And Worcestershire sauce, Liam Perrins, this is the original and best. Worcester sauce, we call it here. Worcestershire sauce is the correct name. But yeah, this is the one you want, the original. So let's go in there with a 
good few glugs of that don't be shy here that'll bring some amazing flavor into the final dish and then back in with the meat and we'll pop this onto now meat and stew i've got picky eaters with me today so i'm going to set this for an hour you could set this to maybe 40 to 50 minutes if you like your meat a little less well done but for the picky eaters it's got to be an hour on with the lid and we'll just let this thing come up to temperature while we make a start on our mash so let's grab those potatoes we diced up earlier and the first thing we need to do is wash off the excess starch because that will make our mash gluey. So under a running cold tap, let's just wash, rinse, repeat, add some salt and then maybe 20 minutes later when we've got about 40 minutes left on the pressure cooker, let's get these onto the hob over a medium high heat and we'll bring those up to a boil and let them simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes. 25 minutes later and when tested with a fork these are completely tender they're really nicely cooked through that's absolutely perfect for mash so let's turn that heat off and drain those into a colander we don't need to keep the water for this one we're not going to make a gravy we've already got one in the pressure cooker let those steam off for a couple of minutes just to really dry out back at the hob i'll add maybe 100 mils of milk we can always add more later and probably 50 grams of butter to start with you'll probably want more than this but you can add that in later as well once that's melted in go our dried potatoes they've steamed for a little while make sure we don't miss any get all that in there and then let's go in with a strong pinch of salt yeah looks cool and let's get mashing so with that potato masher let's get in there and really give these a really good mash get out all of those lumps nobody likes lumpy mashed potato and then white pepper absolutely essential in my mind add it to your taste Let's give that a good stir to combine everything, get all that salt and pepper combined. Taste for seasoning. Definitely needs a little more salt, so add that in. Give it all a good stir, and that should be good to go. Back over to the pressure cooker, and time's up! Great stuff. Release the pressure on this thing. Now be careful doing this. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Let that release, give it plenty of time. Now let's get in there with our instant read thermometer. As I mentioned, picky eaters, so I'm looking for about 70 degrees here. You may be looking for less. Details in the description for temperatures and doneness. This is perfect for me, so I'm going to remove it from the pot. I'm going to cover it tightly with some tin foil. Wrap it nice and tightly and just let that rest. Give it a good 15 to 20 minutes rest while we finish off the mash and get the gravy together. So before we go any further, let's quickly check the seasoning in this gravy. The meat's donated a lot of salt to it, it's fine. Pop the lid back on here for a moment while we mix up a cornflour slurry. So this is maybe 20 grams of cornflour, a little bit of water, just mix those together in a cup. Tip it in, stir it in, and that'll just give us a little bit of thickness, but a glossiness in our, in our gravy that's going to be fantastic. So give that a good stir. The heat will thicken it up slightly, and let's just take a look at that. For a bit of stirring, that's beautiful. That's got a nice sauce consistency. I'm happy with it. And now looking at this meat, it's juicy, it's tender, it's delicious. It's been resting for about 15 minutes now and it's absolutely perfect for what I was looking for. As I say, your level of doneness may vary and you can vary the time from say 40 to 50 minutes to get exactly what you need get ready to serve it with some of that wonderful gravy if you found this video useful please do hit that like button so it can be shared to more people subscribe if you want to see more and thanks for watching